Okay. Here we go. All right. We talked about a different way of doing a chromatic uh, warm up. And what we did was we created what I call the power chord, what's known as the power chord. I take my first finger, put it on any place on the guitar. I put my third finger on the string below it, and I do a double restaurant. Now I would practice that going up the neck. Notice I get a sound if I slide. Sometimes I'll actually pick it up to get rid of that sound. Now I can do that on the, the E and the A and the B and the D string. So, and also on the D. I can't do it on the next two strings right now because of the relationship between G and B. So we're going to work with the top bottom three, which is just fine because there's so much to do there. Now, once you're finding that the shape is easy, one of the nice things to do is to, well, we're going to use that four to the floor and high five idea. I'm going to go to my A string, which is where I can get that, that idea the easiest. And I'm going to make my shape, the power chord shape, on the A and the D string. Now, this happens to be a D. If I want my four, I drop it down. Here's my one again. If I want my five, I go up. So, a typical blues might go one. go down to get my four. Two measures, of course, and bring it back. Three, four. I could go high, and there's my five. I could do that twice or skip to the four, skipping a string, and then back. Now, the nice thing about that is I can put it anywhere. Here it is, one step higher. One, four, one, five. Half step higher. One, four, one, five. So you can try it anywhere, but I'm going to give you one more variation of that. And here is my <clears throat> here is my power chord one. To go to four, I can go four to the floor. But four and five are consecutive. So I have the option of going high five or just going up two, two uh, frets from the four. So I might play my blues like this. And this time I'll use quarter notes. slide up to, here's my five. All right, I threw in a little turnaround at the end of that, but that's fine. All right, we covered that idea, and you could do that anywhere up the neck. Um, if you do it starting from the lowest string, here's my four. I have no option of going to the five by going high. So, what I might do is well, I have to do the five going up two above four. So, one thing that's nice about it here is that this scale, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four, is, can be put into play. So, I could get... and it's better if you do it with another player right now. All right, the next thing we talked about was our family, our G family. And on the one, I just want to run, these are going to be quick reminders because we've covered most of this. So there's my G. If I want to go to five, I'm using one, uh, two, and three. I'm going to slide the third down and, and make my five that way. Just a nice way to get there from one to five. Get a one five song, any song, and, and memorize it so that sound is in your in your ears. To get to one four, I'd probably from this position I'd do the double. So I've got the two fingers on the third fret, and that way I can put my shape in the bottom. And 
to get to four, I take the shape down. Here's my one. Now I can't go up for the five, so instead I pick everything up with the third finger, and I do the triangle D instead. To get good at it, you might just try working with forgetting the pinky and just working the third finger and the first two fingers. Now, if I'm using this particular thing, I just want to avoid the high E string on the G. I want to avoid the low strings on the D. But if I do it this way, I can also go to the C this way. alternate for G is two, three, four. In which case, I could drop the shape to my four and add the first finger. Notice I left that pinky down. Why not? It's in the chord. There's my one, and there's my four. Now, what's nice about it, from the four, I could just leave the first finger down and get to my five, and slide back. The other chord we added, this, uh, we added was the relative minor. I could play with one, two, three, and come down. I could play with two, three, four, and come down. I tend to like one, two, three, because I could come down and then continue into the 50s ballad progression by picking up the first finger, pivoting to C, and from C, I leave my first finger down and go right to D. So here's my 50s ballad. One, six, four, five. The next chord we talked about was the two chord, which is A minor. Uh, I could go from the six chord to the two chord. I drop the shape of the, of the E minor down and add the first thing. Going back and forth can give me songs like a minor chord so, uh, sounding uh, song. Now, to finish that pattern off, I go for the A minor, I leave my C down, and I go to the D7, and I slide back up. So E minor, A minor, D7, slide up. But wait a second. With that idea, if I start on G, I get this sound. E, e minor, A minor, D7, slide it up. I could play all those 50s ballads again. Listen. Blue moon, you saw me standing alone. Or how about this one? Come, come, darling, come and go with me. Please don't send it. You see, it's a related to that 4-5. We'll get into that idea a little more later. If I stretch from an E to its 5 in the key of G, I want to learn a B minor. That's our three chord, G, A, B. Here's the simplest one. I take my first finger, I put it on the A string. <clears throat> I skip a string and I make the A7 shape. And then I skip another string and make a double A7 shape and I have a beautiful lush B minor. It's a B minor seven, but it works perfectly well. Now I said B minors are the fives of E minors. E minors are the five of A minors. A my A's are the five of D's. D's are the five of G's. That again. So I should, I'm gonna get rid of the idea of major and minor right now. B's are the five of an E. E is the five of an A. A is the five of a D. And D is the five of a G. And we're beginning to start to learn how to work in the circle.